Welcome back to another episode of The Lost Codex, a source of lore dedicated to the people, places, and histories of Azeroth's universe. In today's episode, we'll be journeying back in time to the earliest days of Ordered Azeroth. We'll be exploring the founding of Zandalar, the wild gods that made their home along its slopes and valleys, and the rise of a new, powerful empire. Let us begin. The trolls of ancient Kalimdor were among the first primitive life forms to appear in the dense wilds of the lands. While they differed in shapes, sizes, and practices, trolls shared a common ground in their worship and reverence of the wild gods of Kalimdor. Many of the wild gods of this part of the land made their home among the peaks and valleys of a large mountain range in southern Kalimdor. The trolls would call the wild gods Loa, and in time, they would name the sacred mountain range Zandalar, and build small encampments along its vast, jungled slopes. Among the most powerful of the troll groups was a tribe that took the name of the mountain range for themselves. The Zandalar tribe believed the tallest plateaus and peaks of the mountains were the most sacred, and as such, turned these lands into their home. Here, they constructed crude shrines in honor of the many Loa they worshipped. And in time, buildings, obelisks, and architecture appeared, transforming the mountain plateaus into a bustling city known as Zul Dazar. Over time, as the jungled plateaus vanished beneath the construction of the sprawling troll city, Zandalari culture continued to grow and evolve at a rapid rate. Like any troll tribe, the Zandalari had its fair share of warriors to defend and oversee Zuldazar's expansion. But as the most superstitious of the tribes, the Zandalari's uniqueness stemmed from the many mystics, witch doctors, and sages that made up the tribe's numbers. Their devotion to the mysterious Loa, who nurtured the tribe's natural curiosity, led to many Zandalari dedicating their lives to scholarly practice. Although the wild gods of Kalimdor ranged in shape and size, the Zandalari knew these beings to be ancient and powerful, and soon, close bonds were formed with the Loa they encountered. While the Loa bore resemblance to the many animals and creatures that had arisen and evolved over the course of the ages, some wild gods in this part of the land took the form of the many ferocious dinosaurs that stalked the wilds of the south. Gonk, the Loa of Shapes, and Lord of the Pack, was not only revered for his agility and cunning, but was also worshipped for the fierce animal he embodied, a raptor. Although the raptors of Kalimdor were vicious predators, their intelligence and pack mentality made them a popular choice for mounts and hunting companions for many troll tribes, including the Zandalari. Despite the predatory nature of raptors, Gonk was neither cruel nor vicious, but rather noble, quick-witted, and on occasion, playful and sharp. While Gonk and his raptors stalked the slopes and wild terrain of the jungles, the Teradax Loa Paku dominated the skies. Much like the other Loa of the region, Paku made her home up in the highest peaks of Zandalar's mountains, with flocks of others of her kind. Unlike the widespread population of raptors across Kalimdor, these massive flying dinosaurs were primarily only found in the jungles of the southern wilds. Despite these creatures' resilience and hard-to-reach nesting grounds, the Zandalari were determined to tame these beasts and earn Paku's favor. In time, the Zandalari were among the only trolls that managed to earn the trust of these winged reptiles, and soon found themselves soaring above the tallest canopies of the land. Although the Pterodax of Zandalar were both fearless and temperamental predators, Paku herself was known for her wisdom, sharp wit, and tough yet motherly compassion. While Gonk and Paku's children may have been tamed and integrated into Zandalari culture, the surrounding jungle was still ruled by one being in particular. The Loa of Kings, the God of the Hunt, Rizan, 
the Devil Soar. Unlike the raptors and pterodactyls of the land, Devil Soars were nearly impossible to tame, and the Zandalari knew better than to try and domesticate these carnivorous behemoths. Despite the unbridled ferocity Devil Soars were known for, Razan himself was proud and fiercely protective of those who revered him, and often granted his blessing and strength upon the most faithful of his servants. As the Zendalari continued to carve and shape out their home in the mountains of southern Kalimdor, other troll tribes had already begun to form and spread in the shadows of Zandalar's towering peaks. The dawn of a new age was on the rise. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Lost Codex. We'd like to take this time to bring attention to our newest project. Decoded, a Lost Codex podcast, will feature myself, Jesse, as the host, alongside a guest or two, where we'll discuss different themes of the stories, characters and their backstories, and lore elements of all kinds. To learn about the origins of the Lost Codex, and how Jeffrey and I crossed paths, tune into our first episode. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube can be found below. We'd also like to take this time to thank all of our patrons who make this possible. Your support and appreciation for what we do makes it all worth it, so thank you. If you'd like to get in on the Patreon action, check out the links below. Some patron rewards include early access to our slides and scene descriptions, behind the scenes access to each of the episode scripts, special Discord rank and channel access, and even a custom printed birthday card. Stay tuned for further reward updates relating to the Decoded podcast. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lore for a behind-the-scenes look at the animation stage of our video production. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.